I have a little bit of a delay, but we'll go ahead and get started. So welcome everybody. Welcome Carlos. I know we've already been talking for a little bit. Thank you for, uh, you know, sitting down to do this with all of us to, to share your animations and being willing to share it with everybody. Um, we're going to get into a lot of game cycles tonight and talk about all kinds of body mechanics stuff on how to improve your cycles, both from a character standpoint and physics standpoint and all that goodness. So if you're struggling with any kind of body mechanics, I think this is going to help you quite a bit. And that said, um, I want to kick this over to Carlos. He is a student of mine who is an augmented animator. And uh, like I said, he, he's willing to share his animations tonight. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody, Carlos, and share a little bit about like where these animations are coming from and, and everything. Yeah, totally. So hi, everyone. My name is Carlos, and I am currently a uh, contract animator for Trollhouse Games, and uh, which is we're working on a game right now uh, called Carpet Town. And it is an action RPG. And a lot of the stuff that I've been working on is mostly game cycles involving creatures. Um, so anywhere from like insects to um, bipedal uh, birds and four-legged uh, animals. That's what I kind of what I've been working on recently, which are super challenging, struggling a bit with it, but it's a lot of fun stuff. And yeah, if you think humans are hard, well, <laughs> yeah. So here we are. Yeah. We're gonna see how we can we can bump this up a notch. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share my screen, and we'll start digging in. So let's take a look here at what you got. Sounds good. All right. So I'm just gonna play this out. And you can talk a little bit about this if you want, like just give me a little bit of context too, even if, if there's like limitations that you have as I see this stuff. Okay, totally. Um, what can I say? If you can't share anything, don't share it. But um, yeah, just on the animation side of things, I, I, I'll, I'll probably ask you like later when we dig into all of that, but. Um, oh. Yeah, just if anything comes to mind, you know, as you're looking at this, like. Gotcha. Um, this yeah, guy's like, like, like a mushroom, that guy? Yeah, that one was more of like a mushroom, uh, mushroom-like character with the, with like spory uh, holes on the top of it. Gotcha. So we got these, the, the, like the, the compilation here, and then we've got some extra ones down here, right? Yes. This head, head attack. This thing is like super creepy, this mushroom guy. <laughs> it's like in all my dreams. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Glad. <laughs> cool. So much fun. <laughs> yeah. Cool. We got bird gets hit, and we got the player finished, death animation for the player, and death animation for bird. Cool. Um, so I'm going to jump around quite a bit uh, between all of these. Uh, and I'm seeing some consistent uh, challenges that you're having okay. with all of them. So I think uh, I think it's going to be huge for you to to level up with these in the game animations. Just to hear, just like this 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 one or two insights will, will probably open up a whole new Pandora's box for you. Um, let's um, first we'll talk about this crab guy, um, his attack. Then I think we'll talk about the bird jump and the leaf jumper here. And then we'll, like, I want to also get to his, like, his spawning and, like, pincer mm. taunting and stuff like that. that I think that, that will be cool. And last, I think we'll get to the mushroom guy. We'll see how time time goes and everything. But, uh, yeah. Let's, Sounds let's good. Where we end up. So the crab combo. So this guy is pretty cool. Um, the th there's several things that I see right off the bat. And one big thing that I told you was going to open a whole Pandora's box for you is that 
I feel like in general, most of these animations, when there's an attack or something like that, everything moves at the same time. So when he gives an attack here, what I mean by that is his arm is here, his body is here, and they hit their extremes at the, ex the same time. So uh, like going back to the Coco video I did this week on mm -hmm. YouTube, I talked about lead and follow. And that's what this is all about is breaking things up. So you know what is leading and what is following to give it more of an organic feeling. Um, one actual like great reference that you could, you could see for this is there's that slow-mo moment you've seen Infinity War, right? Marvel's yeah. Infinity War. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so one great reference for this is to look back at Infinity War, the moment where Thanos is gonna punch Captain America. And he does they have this slow motion moment where he goes to wind up his fist. And what I want you to do when you look at that is look at his chest here. Like look at this line and see what his chest is doing. And what you'll see is that the chest is leading that punch. The chest actually winds up and then the hand comes back. And then the chest comes forward and the hand drags and then it punches. So that's what, uh, what would give your combo hits here a lot more impact so they don't just come forward at the same time. When he, when he winds up here, I would say mm -hmm. like right around here, we'd want this line, we want this crab chest shell to start twisting this way, right? It would already start to bend and change this angle to wind up. And as that's happening, we hold this crab arm back, right? So we get that this here. And then you can do what you're doing here where you're leading with the elbow uh, if you want. And that will work better just because the body is going to already arrive first. And it's going to have so much more power because we're going to feel we're going to feel like this torque into the body to throw it into the move. And it won't just feel like it's only the claw doing the work. Right. So you get this in there and then this feels more impactful and it will read clearer right now. It kind of reads like pose pose because it all hits at the same time. So that's my first big note for you on, on this guy. And that's something mm -hmm. that to all of these animations to loosen them up quite a bit. Um, something else to note, uh, it's easy to, it's, this is a common thing for a lot of animators is to, to animate punches and kicks and everything and always do it from the arm and forget to take the body to a, to a, a much higher like polish level. So I'm not mm -hmm. saying that the body is terrible, but if I let's let's just track this guy actually, this this like spot on his crab shell. So we got a nice arc here, right? Mm -hmm. You feel that whack right here? It's pretty linear right there yeah. compared to the arc that you have later. So if what we had was some extra rotation, some extra translation, maybe you're using a little bit of Z, a little bit of X, a little bit of translation X compared to just up and down or just the, the bend, you know, to give us more of this kind of arc through there, you know, it, you can be, you can create any arc you want, but that's, that's one example that could work to make that feel a little bit smoother. And I see this again and again where these there's these linear moments. So you do this arc through here and then it goes linear again, or it just kind of like goes on the straight line. And so that makes it feel robotic. It's like this, this feels a little bit off. It doesn't quite feel like a crab because it doesn't have that organic like arc into it. Arc to it. Right. That uh, makes total sense. And so like you really see it here. If we're, if we're just staring at this spot and tracking that with our eyes all the way through, it feels yeah. very like linear and locked on this line. So that will do a lot to 
uh, you know, loosen this up again and make this feel better. So, you know, if, when it comes to the first thing that I would focus on, that's probably the first thing that I would go about fixing. Yeah. Checking the core body that, that my limbs are attached to, because if I change anything on the core body, everything else has to change. Right. Um, just, just like if this chest is leaving, that arm has to hang back. So that's what I would start with and focus on getting, um, I always used to focus when I like animating and VFX and stuff like that. I would like to get the hips kind of rolling around. And then I'd also like the chest to kind of follow slightly behind the hips usually. And then they would do a little bit of a roll too. And I would have a dominant like axis. Like I would have for this move, if it's a punch, then it would probably be a dominant twist. You know, if it was a jump, it would probably be dominant, like bend back and forward. But on top of that, I, I squeeze in just a little bit of Z and the other rotations that I'm not using that much mm -hmm. to get that roll in there so it feels organic. So that's kind of like how I think about it workflow wise. Uh, I'll probably tackle the, the dominant axis first and then go back and add in that, that extra rotation for the roll. Got it. No, that makes sense. Because what I've been doing is actually um, just to kind of keep it clean. I have been removing any of the other like minor um, axes that I'm not working on um, just to just to focus solely on just that one axis. But that makes sense to have it roll like that instead, though, like that would definitely accentuate it more. If you're comfortable working workflow wise, it's totally legitimate to to forget about the other axes for a while like you can just keep it clean like you said you can do the twist first and focus on that and worry about the rest later knowing you're going to go back to that just you know make sure you go back to that and yeah. um this is something that if you're if you're are you blocking in stepped uh, for some of them i am uh, for others i am going into a um, uh, straight ahead and post to pose okay so if you're blocking in stepped for some of these shots for those shots i would say um, know that you're going to go back and, and tweak, add those extra rotations, but make sure you add them just before you go into spline. Got it. Gotcha. Amazing quality. Wow. I'm just checking the chat feed here, catching up. I know it's a little delayed. Hi guys. Hope everyone's enjoying it so far. I like what you're doing from like a bend to straight standpoint, like where you've got this bend claw and we've got this straight into the bend, mm -hmm. um, but it's a bit poppy. So really like when you get to the point where you're working on the arms, consider the arc of that, like what I like to watch is the elbow. So, mm -hmm. so this here, pops just because the arc is coming across and then it just goes back like that um, in one frame. So how do you fix that? Probably like an easy solution. Let's see if I turn ghosting on. An easy solution would be to have this straight like around here or vice versa. So you have this straight here, and then you're just kind of like arcing into that bend from this angle. So you arc in and then arc out, and you can create kind of like a figure eight like that. The other option, like I said, is to do the opposite where you keep the straight here and you just move the bend forward if you can. Um, and then the another option besides that is to think about this in 3D space and maybe have the bend like underneath it so that it, it kind of arcs down here, right? Rather than, rather than it being an arc that's more from the side angle, like you have the bend just kind of like down here and lower, you know? So be, be very conscious of those arcs and that way you won't get those pops in there. Gotcha. So here it comes. Yeah, I mean, once, once you have that body feeling better, once all of the body is arcing, this is going to be so much easier because you won't be fighting the, the linear moves that the body's already giving you. You'll be kind of be getting some free arcs 
out of it because the body's already working. Like when it comes up here, it gets very and then down again. Yeah. So keep your eye on that. And that will that will pump this guy up quite a bit. And on on the other shot that you have with him that we're gonna see earlier, uh, there's a couple more things that I have that will help you overall with every shot you do with him. Okay. So we'll get into that. Last note I'll give you on this particular clip is the eyes. Whenever I'm attacking, like doing an attack animation or you know something that's very focused where the character has to keep focus, it's very important that like if this was a human and he was a boxer and he was punching, he, he would keep his eyes, his head would be locked on target. Because if you can't see what he's aiming at, then he might completely miss it or get clocked in the face. So I don't know if this is like a crab thing. They totally could have googly eyes and be all over the place. But my assumption is it will feel better if you keep the eyes from like glancing off this way and keep them like looking at the target. I don't know. Where, where's the target in the game? Do you have a clear idea of where they are? Like they're usually going to be like right in front of the crab or well it, it's because the player can go around the crab um circling it but if the crab is going to be looking at the player then yeah they'll be looking straight straight at them instead straight at them okay because what i feel when he's coming up and doing these wind up attacks is that like if i'm looking at this as a pupil this is like looking in all kinds of directions so uh you know if this is straight ahead then he would be you know, probably looking back at this way as he's making the move, whatever, whatever it is, you know what I mean? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that is, that is a bit of a challenge in games. If you've got a move where a player can attack from any direction, it's hard to always make something feel like uh, lifelike because they can do whatever they want and you can't do whatever you want with the animation. So <laughs> The, the the last actually the last note I'll give you for this this particular animation this body something else to consider is more translation weight shift uh, you can t stop me at any point and tell me if this is like an engine like limitation path but I think it would be great to feel him step to the side or not step to the side, but like weight shift as he's throwing one of these punches. And maybe he weight shifts more for one one uh, snip than the other, right? So it's like this one's big and then this one's just a little one. And then you can kind of sneak in maybe like a couple of leg uh, plants in there. So you get that more organic feel like he's not locked in place because that's, that's how he feels right now. He's like, I'm here and all I can do is move my arms. So if you can kind of free him up a little bit and then you always return him back to this idle spot, then you're good. But you can mm -hmm. use pack moves to make him feel like he, he can roam around. So that's how you can loosen gotcha. up the cycle. Yeah, totally. All that helping so far? Like making yeah. some ideas? Cool. Totally. <laughs> Cool. We're gonna check the chat here, see if I'm missing any questions or anything. Looks like we're good. Okay. I'll answer more questions too after the stream, like in the comments if you guys have any for me specifically. So this guy, um, I've done some fun stuff too, but I'm gonna go ahead and wipe that out first. And share what I'm thinking of you. And then you can tell me if there's any rig limitations or, or game limitations on this. Okay. So first thing for this guy, what I what I love about this is that he he's got a lot of like there's a lot of weight in the jump itself. Like there's a lot of spring to this hop, you know what I mean? It, like the hang time, the hang time feels different than than the, the descent, it feels like he really shoots down and there's that different timing and spacing there that makes this feel very springy. 
So I, I really like that. Um, the, how do we take that up a notch? It's similar to the crab. The first thing that I notice is that, let's start with the side view. He is very linear in his overall uh, path of action throughout the whole hop. So to make this feel more organic, we need to really build in that arc into your loop. Oh, right. Yeah. So it's, it's counterintuitive because in a game cycle, you're working in place so much that it's very automatic to just be like, it goes up and comes down. Um, mm -hmm. I always try to build in, sneak in some of those arcs to make it feel organic. Um, the tricky part is, is that you have to come back to that idle position, right? So yeah. um, sometimes you have to do things that, that kind of seem a little weird. Like he's just, he's basically going to loop and then he's, he's going to loop and come back to the starting position. Um, let's see if that, let's make sure that would work with what you're doing here. So he anticipates, hops up, and then you'd have a little bit of this and then back. And sometimes what'll help is if you can kind of go into a figure eight, like you, you do this settle through here. Mm -hmm. And basically this will be like your landing recovery and then your settle anticipation back and then shoot up into the air. Got it? Yeah, no, that makes total sense. Cause that's exactly how I was doing. It was just translating it up, um, literally up and down on the, on the Y. So no, that makes total sense. Yeah. It's next level. It's tricky stuff to start <laughs> figuring out how to like shoot them forward and bring them back. Um, and you could even talk to the, like, the, I don't know how they're making the game, but you can even, even talk to them to see what like stretch the limits of what's possible in the game. Like, Maybe, maybe it is even allowed that you don't have to land in the same spot, right? Because then you can make it feel really natural to have him actually cover some ground. You can have it be more of a leap, but he yeah. still goes forward. That way he always feels like he's going forward, right? Right. Because sometimes when you do these loops, it makes it feel more organic, but then when you put it into the game, it doesn't work as well. So uh, it's always important to check with the... Uh, you know, the, the programming team and, and test it in game and stuff uh, and make sure that it's giving you what you want. I think that's how we had it is just, just translating it because then in the game it would uh, through, what was it called? I think it's called like through group motion, it would, they'd have it automatically go forward instead. Um, but the way that you're describing it though, is like it's, it is, it is just translating and the way that I was animating was it literally going up instead as opposed to like, arcing it, um, but I'll, I'll definitely experiment with that too, just to see how maybe that would work in the, cause this is like right now it's in Unity, but maybe it would probably work a lot better. Um, I'll have to experiment for sure and see how that would work out. Cause I think that would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, totally experiment with that. And I'll, I'll, I'll add on to that and say, um, if it's a situation where you have to, like, like the game is gonna do it automatically and you have to animate linearly, like where mm -hmm. he's just like straight up and down. What I would do is actually work on a version where he is arcing just so that you can have the path correct and do the rotations and the leg movements the right way. So that when you, you can snap it back to the linear up and down and that way the, the legs and the, the rest of the body rotations and everything should work well in game when it takes over automatically. Make sense? Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. This, this okay. is food for thought, depending on how it works out for you. And I'm going to say the same thing for the front view. So it'd be great if you covered ground from one side to the other, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you could even make a more complicated loop where instead of it's just one hop, he hops here and then he hops back. So it's Got like it. two hops built in. But that way, you're always kind of coming back to the one idol. You know, you're cheating the system. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> so that makes him feel a lot more organic just to have that path on the body. And you get the excuse to really, like I said, with the crab is getting more of that tilt in there from this side and that side. 
that rotation Z in the body. Um, so it's not just this uh, bend forward and back. <clears throat> and that's working really well, by the way. Uh, like I'm, it's, it's in a solid state. Thank you. And you could also incorporate some twists, you know, so maybe he, he translates over to, to one side. You always want to, you always want to pick a side when it comes to anticipating, like if I'm going to do a jump, very rarely in real, real life, will you equally put your weight between both feet, go down, prepare to jump and then jump. So, and posing wise, it makes it more interesting to, to, to pick a side because you're, you're giving contrapposto. So in the anticipation, when he prepares, even though this is a light character, push him over to one side, one side of the, the feet ends up getting more squashed and taking more of the weight and the other mm -hmm. side gets more stretched and then it feels more dynamic already. He's almost like Spider-Man leaf jumper, you know? Yeah. Um, and then when he goes to take his jump, you get to push off from there and automatically, you know, you go the opposite direction or whatever you choose and you start building in that arc. And then, um, you know, when you land, you want to do the same thing. So you're going to want to pick a side. It's like, okay, when he comes back down, he's going to pick the opposite side and then he's going to settle back into this. And it's perfect because I need him to go into a loop. So he's going to go back yeah. into the anticipation, right? So um, building on top of the body, once you get the body feeling right, I would then focus on the legs. And since we're dealing with like a centipede or crab-like character that's got six legs, uh, you know, where they've got these multiple digits, it can be a little weird to think about how they use their legs. Um, always try to break them up. And what I love here is that this one is a little bit more stretched out and this one's a little bit higher and squashed up, which you thought about. Yes. Yeah. And then for the landing, he really is coming down forcefully on his legs. That's fine. Can you stretch these at all? Given the rig, uh, there is no squash and stretch on the body or on the legs. So I'm not able to stretch them. No, no option to make that better, huh? Uh, uh, I, I'll, I can check with the rigger and see if there is a way to stretch it out. So just find a way to stretch it and uh, modify it. Um, but right now, yeah, there is no squash and stretch. Maybe you could use a lattice or some kind of bend deformer, or you could cheat it just for like a frame or two where you have like... Uh, oh... What I'm thinking is that you stretch, you elongate one of them to get there sooner. Mm -hmm. That way they feel broken up because it feels, feels far more organic to have plop, plop, even if it's just one or two frame difference than it is to have plop, you know? Right. So if you had that squash and stretch, you get a little flexibility there. Yeah. Um, and what I was going to suggest is that when he comes in for the landing, maybe he actually comes forward a little bit, or maybe you can rig it so that he translates back. And that gives you the excuse to land and then get some of that, those, like a wave in the feet is what I'm, what I'm thinking about. So since we've got six legs here, we got some stuff to work with. Like when I, when I look at your character, like a game character, or I'm thinking about my own shots, I'm always like, what tools do I have to really push this to make it feel cool? And I'm like, well, this guy's got six legs. He doesn't have arms. He doesn't have a chest really. It's just one, one body. So I, I think about how I can maximize what I have uh, to make things more organic. So if he's got six legs, uh, I, I might say, well, who's to say that I can't plant these and maybe the back ones and then leave these guys up longer like dragging for the landing and then and then like after a couple frames when he lands they go from dragging to on the ground and these guys come up does that make sense uh, so, right. so you could build in some organic movement there something to experiment with anyway to have not all the legs arrive at the same time 
Some of them drag behind longer, some of them replant while the others are up in the air still. Kind of if you're thinking quadruped, you've got, you know, like a cat would have maybe the front right foot down and the back left foot down, but the others would be up in the air, right? Because they're all forward holding the weight and working together. And that way you could kind of like, if it's just even just for a couple frames, you can get kind of like this wave movement through the feet. So it feel kind of like centipede, you know? Yeah. That makes the character more interesting to me. That makes the animation more lifelike. Um, so give that a try. And if you had to choose for squash and stretch, uh, like if the rigor doesn't give you much option, but he says, hey, we can do this, this, we can do one thing, then I hope it's this. I hope, like you might've been spoiled with seeing some of my early drawings, but I hope that you can stretch and bend this shape a little bit. Yeah. Because this guy feels very light and he's a leaf. I want, like, I, I read the leaf shape I want that leaf to bend a little bit because it is so light and it's flexible and we know what a leaf feels like. And it would just be so awesome to be able to modify the shape for a jump like this. So like I'm thinking about takeoff here. Um, we got our C shape. And then he takes off. And this is, this could be, you know, you, you need to kind of, think for yourself what the anatomy is of this creature that doesn't exist in real life. I would assume since this is his head where his eyes are, this part of the leaf or his body is more rigid, less flexible. And then I would assume that towards the back, it's more like a tail where it gets looser. Yeah. Um, how loose depends on what you think is appropriate for the character. But I think you could get away with bending the back quite a bit. And when you're animating it, you can get really extreme to where you can, you can loosen that up quite a bit, I think. And then just dial it down until the, the guys who you know, are making this game are happy with the, how it looks. So just one sec here to see how this works out. something around there, I think. And if we just turn the ghosting off. Yeah, see? right, so it just drag behind it. Yeah, and we're getting that shape change to sell that flexibility and make it feel mm -hmm. really slick. So we get that C shape into this S shape into the C shape again. And then I would just really just keep doing that like um, and, you know, since he's taking off, it makes sense to have that stretch and it doesn't have to last for too long. But when I look at this without the drawings, if I just think of this, this tip of the leaf here, there's a big gap there. Yeah. The two frames. So it'd be great to really hold that spacing back, keep that spacing tight. Um, you know, thinking about that leaf tip, holding that back as long as possible uh, so that we're really just building this arc here, essentially. This arc as it goes up, right? Yeah. And you can keep dragging it through here and arcing to make that feel better and looser. And you can do the same on the way down as well. So this less so it gives it gives your landing so much more impact to be able to distend the shape right and It makes us feel the weight of it because there's this mass that hits the floor and then there's this part that drags behind it. I'll turn the ghosting off in a second. And it'll look, it'll make more sense. Uh, 
that makes total sense for it because all the mat like it, it is an actual like a uh, leaf hopper and in, in real life and all the mass and all the i guess the uh is in the front is in the actual body and then the wings of it are going to be that that uh that tip like the that tip at the end of it and it would literally drag behind if it was going up and down like that would be that would be so much more more appealing so because looking yeah. at it now yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean if you could get it in there it would help like if you had the option on the rig it would do a lot for you to to make it feel better um so like just seeing how that arcs out right and then right i would actually change this one so you're kind of like it's, it's very tail like where you know you get that flop in there uh so that that would that would add so much life to this that would make to me to me this makes this makes the hop like is to have that flexibility on there uh, yeah it kind of gives him uh i don't know it makes him feel like happy it could <laughs> depending on how you had it like be like ping, you know <laughs> up in the air um and you could the cool part is is like you get that right for the for the for the side view because this is the most important that that rotation on the body as he's hopping and then you can do it for the for um for the front view so you can get the side to side twist in there and that really like loosens them up yeah so this guy could be really awesome. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm crossing my fingers for you to have the rigger be able to work some magic. Yeah. <laughs> totally, totally. I think you'd find that very useful. So thank you. Yeah, anytime. And we're like running out of time, like nobody's business. Um, <laughs> third, we're 38 minutes in already. I can't believe it. Um, okay. So let's take a look at him. So if I was to give you any feedback on this guy, the biggest thing for me that, like, that, that stands out that, that you could fix to make this better is your hip arc, your, your, just your overall hop attack here. Mm -hmm. anything standing out to you already from this? It's like a pretty linear. Uh, and the spacing too. Uh, yes. Yeah, because it's popping. Yes. And that arc is not completely like yes. there. Yeah. So it's gonna... like, when I ghosted, it's obvious, right? Right. comes back and then shoots forward and then like he comes up and then he goes forward and then all of a sudden he comes back and then goes forward again. So that is the number one thing to fix with this leap to make it feel better. And it will be so much better as soon as that arc, as soon as that arc is cleaned up. Um, and just like everything else, if the hips are off, the problem tends to cascade to the to the wings, to the arms, to the legs, everything. So this is fine. This, uh, like he, him stepping into the hop, putting that weight onto this leg and then uh, coming forward in, like in, into, into the stretch here. This is all fine. What, um, what doesn't work so well is the spacing of it to have like this, let me, let me ghost here and get this down to two frames. I still can't see it that well. Um, we'll do this by eye. Then. So from here to here, there's a big gap. And then there's a very- Oh, gap. right. So you either split the difference between this one and that one to give this guy like a little bit more love on the spacing side, like give him a little more room to play with the same, like not really moving this much. Um, or you keep this guy moving forward, the hips moving forward a little more here. And then as he comes up, 
do not delay this forward momentum. Once you've stepped into a move and he's releasing weight and jumping into the air, that momentum should carry him forward. Okay. Like yeah. in, in, in earth physics, uh, if he's already starting to go forward, you can't stop that. His weight is off the ground. There's nothing that's going to knock him back into place. He can't push himself back into place unless he like really was working his wings maybe to slow him down. It takes an external force. It takes like the wind resistance to push him or it takes something hitting him and knocking him back. So once this momentum begins and his, he's really just lift off like a rocket, he's got to keep mm-hmm. going forward. So keep that in mind when it comes to your hip spacing and you'll have a clearer idea on where you to go with it. Got it. No, you're this, right. Um, so this one feels okay, but it'll probably have to be adjusted just because this frame goes back. So you're going back here and you just got to keep coming forward with this guy. Yeah. And then here with the forward momentum we just talked about, this is the problem frame because he went back. So just keep him coming forward. And then that arc starts to sort itself out. And in here, your arc gets a bit shallow and linear. Like, you know, you're really arcing in the beginning. It's almost like this. It's like you're arcing more in the beginning like this. And then you just went like that. For the oh, okay. Landing. Yeah. So you see that? Yeah, I see. So if you get more of that arc on this side too, it'll feel more natural, like a, like a real hop. Then you've got the foundation right. And with a character like this, it's easy to get overwhelmed because you're like, oh man, I've got a bird with a giant beak and a tongue and wings. <laughs> and I don't know what this, I don't know what it's like to animate these things. Um, so start with what you do know, just like a biped for the hop with the hips. Mm-hmm. And then uh, once that's feeling better, I'd say the next thing to focus on would be the legs. So he keeps this leg straight like the whole time and lands right on it. What I would do is get us give us some shape change. Great to have this stretch right here. Great to see it as well. And to not have that covered by the wing would be better. Yeah. Um, when he starts getting up there, like break it up. The, the timing and the spacing of the hips are a little bit slower than the legs have to be. So the, the hip can feel slower, like it's doing less while you can have this straight and then in a couple frames, bring that leg up into a bend. Give us that shape change so we get the stretch to the squash. And then for the landing, it'll be, it'll feel more impactful because he'll be in this like squash position. And then just before he lands, he'll uh, kick that foot out to catch himself, you know, like a few frames before that mask mm-hmm. down on top of it. That is the, if this felt off, if this felt off and like it was missing impact, that's where your bread and butter is between the hip and then those, those feet doing some action in there. Yeah. Got it. I think mentally, like my intention was to have it um, still like go straight back to the idle pose. Um, so I think that's really why I have it going straight down and then the leg just not just it's bending the way it should. Right. Yeah, like and I said, it's easy when you got a character like this and it's easy when you've got those limitations you're thinking about, like I got to get back to the title pose. Um, but allow yourself the time to figure it out. I know it's easier said than done. Know that if you just force it to get it back to the idle pose as easy as you can and kind of skip principles of, of the animation, you know that your animation won't work. It's just guaranteed to be a waste of time. So yeah. you know that it won't be a waste of time to just do the jump like you know a jump has to go and then figure out how to go from there into back into the idle. That's the problem that you need to work out. And so let's let's go there, actually, since that's what's on your mind. 
if he lands here and this this foot is further forward, if you've got the frames, unless you unless you're really limited and you've only got four frames to get back in the idle or something like that, you can land with the feet in a different position and then let him come back to that idol. And it could be a really cool moment to show character that's unique with this bird. And maybe you could work in something like, you know, like this, like attitude with his head, because he's got that crazy long beak mm -hmm. um, to make it so much more interesting. So it's not just a hop anymore. It's like a hop with attitude, like come get me. It's almost like a taunt, right? Right. And it's just, it just becomes part of his attack and who the character is. That's, that's one way to get him back to the idol. Um, he's also got these, I mean, these wings are almost like a, like a get out of jail free card. Like it gives you an option that you wouldn't have with any other character to be like, I'm just going to cheat physics or skip walking and I'll just fly backward. So he could do that as well. It's like he lands and then he like glides back. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. And with these wings kind of going back to that leaf jumper, We've got, um, we've got like a C shape through here. I see we've got some of your coworkers in here talking about the wings not being done or something. Um, <laughs> like, I, that's, that's fine. I, we're not, I, I don't know if you're responding to somebody else you're talking about, but uh, I'm not really judging the model or anything. So we got this C shape and we got this C shape. How do we make that feel better, Carlos? Based off of what I've shared with you on the leaf jumper and getting that drag on the back end of it. And this shape, it's having an S shape oh, in between. It's, so funny. it's almost like you've learned with me before. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So right in here, we're really loosening that up if we, if we get mm. in there. And that gives us that drag to leave the tip of the wing behind. So it's we get that lead and follow automatically. So the base of the wing is power in the move. And, you know, looking at, looking at some like bird stuff, you'll find all kinds of cool things like that. Yeah. But you really feel that dragging behind. And what's really cool about this is gives me a whole idea for a cool game cycle is that he goes from an idle position, this, this pigeon, <laughs> I'm saying it. <laughs> Uh, it, it goes from like, like if this is a game animation, it goes from an idle position to up in the air and a, like a 180 turn, <laughs> like to go in the other direction. <laughs> it's like, I never see anything like that when it comes to game cycles. Uh, like this thing could be a dragon. It just like changes direction and swoops in after you. Right. <laughs> uh, and you can like, are, are you watching a reference like this? I have been, or I've been trying to find really good reference. Um, okay. But that is one that I had not seen. Well, uh, that, the most important thing is that you're looking at the reference. Are you having any particular challenge with the reference? Um, like trying to, to bring that into here, that's, that there's a disconnect, that it's not helping you? I think as far as like reference goes, like part of it was also me trying to be in... Um, Kind of have a very velociraptor kind of feel too mm -hmm. um kind of giving that that those kind of characteristics um just because it to me kind of gives it that look as well um and with with the bird i have been like referencing uh pigeons uh as well uh just to get that kind of yeah feel to it but yeah, maybe looking up more and better reference might be a good way to just get more of a solid feel to it instead. It's worth a look. I, I think for this character more than the other ones, just because um, sometimes like looking at these, I felt like it was human and then other times it was going to be a bird. And then it, um, it just felt like it just felt like there was uh, like an information gap on like how birds move or, or anything that flies and then how velociraptors raptors move and um a lot of time that just takes that just takes time studying that stuff and practicing it out and seeing what the difference is like you know pigeons do the crazy like head tilts and moves yeah and they do all this stuff while the body stays really still it's like completely, completely different <laughs> than a human you know um 
And, and a lot of that stems from their eyes being on separate sides of their head. So they're always trying to like turn to the side to see straight. Um, but that like, just me talking about that, uh, like I know you've been studying that stuff, but that should give you some, some ideas like, like for this, you could have, instead of him just swiping and doing this with the head, like not doing anything, you could have it, you know, do that kind of thing where he like tilts right. his head and <laughs> does this. And that would be, it wouldn't feel so human anymore. And it would feel very creepy and bird-like. Right. Now that makes more. And that gives it that kind of personality too of it being a bird. Yeah. Yeah. So just some yeah, kind of okay. thought there. It's it's not easy totally. to take some time. Uh, creature animation is, like you said, a whole other beast. But um, boom. Um that is the big stuff with this leap. The what I would like to see is like more lead and follow where you're choosing whether the, the wings are gonna power this first or more the hips. Because the wings could totally be like the <laughs> and then his hips barely do anything mm -hmm. you know they really could just lift the hips off the ground in which case what i would say is they should be like anticipating earlier and then following through powering down for, or powering out for that for the wind to to launch them into the air um got it like sooner right and, and then you would have made a clear choice to me that says okay the wings are going to lift them off the ground here and I would assume that he's not a bird that can catch flight. Then he just maybe gets like a little glide out of it. Um, he, can, he can fly a little bit, just just a just a bit to to stay afloat and like attack from the air. Um, but that makes sense though to have it like have it thrust upward, using its wings and anticipate it yeah. beforehand too. Yeah, to have that, and this will be really key because you get like that. You mm -hmm. get that timing where it's like a lot of wind up and then like real, real fast down with that shape change, and it'll thrust him up. And you can get that that shape change in the body where it goes from the squash into you know like that. Um, right. And if you're thinking about flight, and he's kind of getting a little bit of flight time, not just a hop you could kind of approach this as like another idea is that he's a uh, bald eagle. He's using his legs, like a talons coming after people and kind of just kind of glides forward, mm -hmm. which makes it again, a whole nother uh, interesting attack that you could do. Gotcha. That's, that's how your character can really influence things. And I'm going to expand upon that here in a minute. Um, when we go to the next animation. Last few notes, um, definitely keep the, the eyes on target. For something extreme like a landing, they thought, like after he's done an attack, the eyes don't have to be on target the whole time. Um, but definitely keep the eyes on target for, for the other parts where he's attacking, like we already talked about. Mm -hmm. um, and then things like, you know, the tongue animation, they should really be final details that you don't worry about too much. But the when I looked at it, it seems like it gets stuck in a few places. It doesn't feel very loose. Um, yeah. Yeah, you're having a hard time with that, or so here, for instance, it should like his body's really going forward and that tongue just kind of comes along for the ride. Maybe you didn't have time to, to worry about it too much because you knew the rest of the animation wasn't where you wanted. Um, but something like this, I would have instead of the tongue being there, if we turn on ghosting, that I'd want to go from this pivot point and kind of drag back to where that tip used to be for the tongue. Yeah. Right. And really, right. it becomes like a tail then where it's really just dragging behind. Um, and if it becomes something that's like 
moving too much and distracting where it's you know flopping all about and you don't want that then you just got to make a decision to drag it for a little bit and then snap it into a place in the in, in his mouth where it kind of stays um and doesn't keep you know moving all about right that's what we wanted it for for it to have it like flop around as well um but yeah that makes total sense <laughs> oh there we go again <laughs> yeah so we got a one frame massive change there uh you can get to here and you know how to bridge that gap to have mm -hmm. the shape is to get there yeah that s curve and then you can come into this smoother you can you can actually make a better s shape than i did there That way you drag from, from the tip side of things. Yeah. Um, and then let's see here. What was it? Was it this one? Yeah, so the tongue feels pretty slow through here because it doesn't like it's it's up here. And then the spacing is really small. Like it doesn't drag through this section like it should, like it's con constantly caught up with the speed of the head. Mm -hmm. And then it really feels slow through here, and then it suddenly dra starts dragging. Yeah. So be careful of that. That, that more than anything else, I think will make the drag feel off. Is to have those sudden speed ups and slow downs in like one frame or so. Um, and again, it's just good because you're you're not that focused on it. But food for thought as you move forward with this guy. Totally, totally. No, oh, thank you. Anytime, man. Let's see. Let's see. So you had another crab. There's a rendered out version, right? There's yeah. <clears throat> there should be one in the, uh, yeah. The demo real one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me. I'm gonna wrap up the. I'm gonna wrap up this stream probably here in a few minutes, just because we've been going for an hour, and uh, we could obviously talk about this stuff all day because Carlos and I love it. But uh, gotta gotta shut our brains off at some point and try to remember everything that's been said before we say too much. Um, so here, this guy, the, the two main problems that I have with it. I like this less than your combo. I think it's less effective um, because he's spawning, right? Mm -hmm. When I watched it, I felt like he's coming out of the ground and then he gets like cold clocked or something. But I think the intention is that he's like pushing the ground up and kind of coming out of the ground. And it doesn't feel that way for me because he's like, I see him almost like come out of the ground already and then he just suddenly slows down and then he pops up. Um, without adding props or anything to sell it, I would yeah. shoot him up a little faster um, and then have the speed change be more apparent. So let's say th this is essentially what you're He's, he's translating up. You've got a certain acceleration until he hits the ground and he slows down. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe your spacing is probably a little closer than this. We'll say this, and then it's um, it gets it gets bigger. So we got this gap, and then we got like a big gap. So it's really fast, and then wham, we got a slowdown and it gets super like tight as he's pushing through the ground there, the spacing super tight. And then he starts to speed up again and accelerate because he gets through it. We got to nail that up and down so that it doesn't feel as cushioned as this. Like right now, this, if I'm just watching the back of his, his crab shell there. Yeah. It's just very subtle. The spacing is almost even. 
So make that more apparent and then it'll feel like he's like, you know, you want that feeling. You can even do the sound effect yourself and be like, you know, and see if it matches when you watch it. Um, play it out in your head and that will help you quite a bit to get that 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 feeling you're actually pushing through the ground. It's it's hard because you're imagining it. The ground isn't there. So it's like, you're like, I, I, is this right? I don't know. You know, you're, you're playing that game with yourself. Um, yeah. So yeah, just choose where that, that weight is. It could happen even sooner than where you have it in the animation. You could have it here. It could be like that shape that the, the first part of his crab shell pops up really fast and then it's like mm -hmm. erupting out somewhere so yeah yeah, yeah. so and, and that could be cool because we could see more and more of his crab shell as he fights his way up and it could and and it doesn't come out at the same rate you know it's like a little bit at first and then a lot because he's getting faster um so the the translate why the up and down is the thing to get right first really and you can probably the, the cleanest way to do this workflow wise is to add an animation layer and then to go in um, and do the vibrations. On the main layer, you can do the translate Y. Once that feels good, you can add on some of the rotate X, rotate Z to get that roll in there that you want for when the vibration is gonna happen. And then on the vibration layer, you dirty all those curves up and add in like, like um, uh, what do you call it? spikes, like every two frames where, you, you know, you got a keyframe every two frames and you're, you're going up and down with all of them for shake. And you can do it really big and then you can use the, the animation layer and they have an option on the animation layer to, I don't know if you've seen it, to drop the, the weight of that layer. Yeah. So the, yeah. the, bring the influence down and you can really quickly play with it to see, is this enough vibration? Do I need more? So that's, that's the clean way to do that. And that will immediately make this feel better. Uh, and it would be great too for when he comes out of this, this move. So right now he kind of feels like he gets hit and knocked down. I, I mean, it's a little confusing uh, mm -hmm. rather than pushing through. If he's pushing through, he's and then it's almost like a hot power right? He shoots out of it and lands and settles. So right now, when he when he comes out of it, I'd want that acceleration on the, on this crab shell as well to hit this pose. And the other part of this is the lead and follow that I told you has been kind of like a struggle in all of the animations for you. So mm -hmm. if you if you look at this right now we see that everything happens at the same time. I don't read, the first time I watch this, I don't read the moment that he is going snip, snip, like. Yeah. I don't read that. That's what you're going for, right? Yeah. I was trying to alternate between both. Yeah. So that's, that's our lead and follow problem because right now we're getting this. Right? It, it's not like, so if you shoot reference of yourself actually pretend mm -hmm. you're a crab this is this is the best fun you get to have as an animator go shoot reference of yourself pretend you're a crab protect pretend you got claws you can act this out without having the four or six legs or whatever it is just act it out from a chest and arm standpoint and you can go right <laughs> and and what you're going to see when you frame by frame that is you're going to see And you, what do we get out of that? We get that arm drag. We got that chest getting there first, and, and it's coming back and whipping that into place. And so uh, you're gonna get you're gonna get that, and you're probably gonna get some like weight shifts in there. And there's probably gonna be some attitude if if you allow yourself to kind of give that crab an attitude. Maybe he's like a little bit pissed off. Uh, you know, he's a, he's an angry crab. If he's that way, he might be like, you know, <laughs> a little bit of this kind of thing. And that makes it way more fun and interesting for you to animate. So give that a go if you get stuck with making that lead and follow work and making that action read. That could be huge for you and that could change pretty much everything you have here and give you so many different ideas. 
um, <clears throat> again, be, be mindful of your linearness with rotation. Like, I feel like he's only rotating this way. If I look at any of these spots, they feel like linear. Yeah. Back and forth. So keep that in mind. And then <clears throat> high level no freedom. So he's doing, he's going to hang out here for a little bit and be like, come on, you want some of this? Great plan, great idea. It feels robotic here at the end and a little bit at the, at the start with it between the, the snips. What, why, why does it feel robotic? What would you say is the reason? Oh, it doesn't settle down or it doesn't go, there's no like up and down. It goes, there's no down when it tries to go back into the, uh, that idle. Like it just kind of, just kind of, to me, it looks like it just sticks there and just pops into place. That's a great point. Definitely make note of that. Um, that's important. I'm thinking of a different note. Um, it's it's more high level than that. So it's like, yeah, you totally want to have that up and down in there. You want some body action. You want the body to really lead that first, you know, to sell. To, so it's not just the arms. Also, so that we don't just have what makes uh, it more interesting is that if we go and then as this one's finishing, this one can start. They can kind of like overlap each other in action. So it's not just overlap in the sense of spine overlap, but overlap in the sense of the movement. So they kind of like as one's finishing, the other one's starting. And this is getting into rhythm. And this is why this is more advanced. So it makes it feel more connected when it's not start, stop, start, stop start yeah stop. and we get more like um and then you can start to play with how many of those do i want to have and should it be one one two three one two three you know mm -hmm. and as i'm doing that i'm i'm also starting to think about like what personality does this crab have because that could totally dictate where you want to go with how many like um, claw attacks he would do and how he might shift his weight. Like if he was, here's a fun exercise for you. You can deal with all these characters. Uh, think of your favorite, do you have a favorite uh, like game or anime or anything like that? Yeah, uh, Berserk. Berserk is my favorite anime. No idea what that is. Um, <laughs> you can crucify me if you want. No worries. <laughs> uh, I'll say, like, if he, if you picked, it, like, if he was a Dragon Ball Z character, we're going the anime route. If he was a yeah. Dragon Ball Z character, like, you could take one of them and make them this guy. Who would he be? I would be like a, like a Vegeta almost character, like trying to fight. Like, so he's very, fight. he's very pissed off all the time. Very like got to prove himself. So then you would go that route. The other route is that he could be more playful which could be, I don't know, um, what a DC character would be. Like Chiaotzu, almost? Yeah, or yeah. Put like having fun with it, or, or I think Goku is a little bit more playful than Vegeta. He's kind of like fighting is fun. So this, yeah. like if you, if you were more playful, um, if you were more playful, he could be, he could be like, come on, you want some of this? Come on, you know, that could be the crap. <laughs> and then you get this attitude and the hop and he's got kind of like this bounce to the move. Whereas if he's the Vegeta of Crabs, he's like, come on, come on, you know, that kind of thing. So that might give you some uh, breakthrough, some creative blocks in a fun way for you. And you can apply this to your Berserk characters if that's easier. Uh, I just can't do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> totally. That makes total sense though. Like, yeah, that will give it a lot more personality. Yeah. So uh, this this guy could be a rock star just with those changes, and I could fall in love with this animation and your demo reel all at the same time. Um, and then, yeah, I think we'll clip it there just because we're getting it's getting late in the night. I don't want to keep everybody forever, um, but I think we covered the big stuff anyway that you need to hear. 
uh, to, to take all these to the next level. Like this guy, a lot of it's uh, the same, you know, where it's like trying to break up the legs so they don't feel twin. Mm -hmm. Trying to get one go first and the other one drag a little bit more behind. Trying to have a little bit of squash and stretch to, to give us some more life to a simple character that doesn't have a lot of options since he doesn't have arms and stuff. So if you could do stretch and squash and then go back to normal shape, it would feel a lot more organic. Mm -hmm. but yeah, all this is the big stuff. So how was this for you, Carlos? Was this was this good stuff that'll that'll level up your indie game animations? Oh, absolutely. Like everything I could hope for and more. Like you're always so great at this. So thank you. Well, thank you so much. I I, I don't feel great when I especially <laughs> Classic Disney animators, <laughs> but I oh, Glen Keen. yeah, 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 Glen Keen. We'll stop, we'll stop making it hard. <laughs> Good. Um, cool. So I'm glad this is helpful. Definitely keep me updated with this. Such, especially going to be working on these game animations for for a while yet for the rest of the year and uh, next year probably. Um, so keep me updated. Let me know how how things develop. Uh, I'd love to see the progress. And right now I'm going to turn over to the chat and ask everybody, um, how was this for you guys? Was it awesome? Was it, eh? was it, yeah, we got to do more of these. Wait, I'm delayed. Cool. Okay. So if it was, um, and you want to learn more, do not miss my live class next Monday, 1022. So you go to rustyanimator.com slash overcome dash webinar. And there's a link underneath the description for this live stream. Um, and you can, you can ask for the link in the comments and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll give you the link. But come to this if you want to level up even more than what you learned from Carlos's animations tonight. If you want to be critiqued like Carlos had tonight, you can also email me your animations and I'm going to go through some of them live and give you some teardowns while we're there to help you specifically to level up your game. So if you're up for that, go there. There's only a few spots left before Monday and I will see you then and we'll take things to the next level. Uh, so until next time, guys, happy animating. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. Thank you, Carlos, for sharing your stuff. I'll see you soon.